Good afternoon learners from the Northern Cape and I believe there's learners from the Western Cape also tuned in. Welcome to this, our seventh session of Business Studies Telematics Revision. I trust that you had a blessed day today, that you're calm, relaxed and very important that you've got a scientific calculator. Please get a scientific calculator, have it ready because we're going to do some calculations. But before we start, let me introduce you to my co-pilot. Amanda Juris. Amanda, welcome back. Thank you, Lister. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Grade 12s. Oh, uh, wow, is that all you're going to say to the Grade 12 <laughs> learners of the Northern Cape and Western Cape? You normally have a word of wisdom. Grade 12s, it's good to have you with us this afternoon. We, You should be starting your prelims. We'll be very close to prelims now, so I'm glad you're with us this late in the evening. We hope you're working hard. You're focused, you're studying hard. Thanks, Lester. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda, just um, could you tell them how many days left before the start of the final examination? Lester, we should be in the region close to about 45 days. That's excluding weekends. Wow, learners, so you know that the uh, final exams is around the corner and these revision sessions will certainly help you. Yes, right. we have quite a few people tuning in. Already? Yes, I mentioned. Chrisway, we would like to welcome you to the session. And um, they say that they intend answering all the questions correctly. And so they're so excited. So Chrisway uh, and Ms. Demas, welcome. <laughs> We've got a visitor from Ritvale. Hi, they also tuned in. Linus at Ritvale, welcome to you also. And then Pescodia, our good friends. They are also <laughs> tuned in. Great Twelves, wherever you are, send us the SMS, say hello. Amanda, just remind them of that SMS number. It's 31498. I repeat, 31498. Send us your SMSs so that we may know who's in the house today. All right, well, learners, if we can go to slide number one. And this is just a recap of what we did in the first six sessions. You will recall session one to three. We identified challenges, developed strategies, we looked at long-term strategies and also strategic management instruments. Then session 4 and to 6, we looked at recent legislation and the impact of that on both small and large businesses. Now, learners, session 1 to 6 covered learning outcome number 1, business environments. Today we're going to look at some topics in learning outcome number two, business ventures. And in particular, we are going to look at investment opportunities. Amanda will take us further, but before she does that, again a reminder, you may not have the notes. I would like to forward the PowerPoint presentations to you, so please send me an email at ldmomberg at gmail.com ldmomberg at gmail.com your educators can also get it on the Moodle site the Moodle site of your education department all the previous presentations from 1 to 6 will be on there including the latest one Amanda can you take us can you take it further great trials today we're going to be looking in this session we're looking at investment options the types of shares Assessing your choice of investments and return on investment calculations. I know this is the one topic that learners are very scared for, but as we unpack it today, you will see it's not that difficult. Right, Amanda, could you define quickly for us what the term investment refers to? Okay, investment is basically the use of money to generate wealth and income. Okay, are you telling me that money can generate more money? There we go. So You need money to make money. So Amanda, if when you generate money using money, an important characteristic, there's no labor involved. There's no effort involved from the part of the investor. Is that true? It is true, but I mean, I think there's also a little bit of effort that you need to do research and know your markets and know your different investment options open to you. Okay, good. Right, the learners, so a very simple description. Investment simply refers to the use of money to generate or to create wealth and further income. 
Right on. So let's look at the different investment options that will allow you to generate extra money. The first one we've got is a notice deposit and we'll talk more to that later on. The second one is what you should be familiar with, a fixed deposit and we'll unpack that for you also. The third one is property investment. The fourth one is what we call a unit trust. Number five, offshore investments. And number six, shares. So these are all options available to you, the investor, to generate or to create wealth or additional income. Amanda, just go through quickly the notice deposits. Your notice deposit is a short-term investment option available to you. For investors who want a high return and access to fund at short notice, Let's stay with your, your notice deposits. It's like sometimes you have a 32 days account where you don't, um, you want to have that immediate access to money. You, you know, when you have a fixed deposit and it's like your money is invested for 12 months, 24 months, and the money is not available to you for a long, long time. But with your notice deposit, you can actually call notice when you need it because you have 14 days notice deposits as well. Yeah. So uh, your money is very liquid. Yeah, so what, the one example we're citing here is Standard Bank. They've got the 30-day call account. Now, what that simply means is that you must give the bank 30 days notice before you have access to that to money. money. But you say there's a 14-day call account also? There's a 14-day call account. They even have a 48 days, uh, 48 hours call account as well, but, which means if... So, for example, there is a death in the family and you don't have insurance and you need cash money. You have two days to call the bank and the money will be available to you. Okay, so if I want to watch the Blue Bulls in the Curry Cup final, will I have access to that money within 48 hours? Oh, yes, you're welcome to come and watch them at Newlands when they play the Western Province. <laughs> Lennis, the second type of investment option is what we call a fixed deposit. And the emphasis is on the word fix because what happens there, again, it's also a short-term investment option. The depositor or the investor pays one single deposit. So it could be 10,000, could be 100,000, it could be a million rand. One single deposit and over a fixed term. And that's why we call it fixed. For example, if the term is over one year, then that money is not available during the course of that one year. It will only become available after one year. And then also with a fixed deposit, you get a fixed interest rate. We know interest rates fluctuate, they increases and they decreases, and that obviously affects the interest that you get. But with a fixed deposit, the, fix, the term is fixed and also the interest rate is fixed. So you're actually guaranteed that even though the repo rate, the rate might decrease, the Reserve Bank might decrease the repo rate, the bank by which you invested the fixed deposit, they cannot decrease your fixed deposit rate. Yes, and another thing, Lester, your interest rate will always be more than with your savings account. So you're going to make slightly more money. With your fixed deposit. There you go. For the simple reason that your money is fixed and you do not have access to it. And the bank use that money and they borrow it to other people. They lend it to other people. Yes. At excessive at a, rates. At a higher rate than what they pay you. Exactly. And that's actually how they make their money. Linus, um fixed deposit, you get high returns. On a fixed deposit, it's guaranteed. The term is fixed. You cannot get the money during that period of the term. Sometimes it could be one year, three years, or five years. All right, Amanda, the next type of property option is property in, or investments in property. Is this a profitable investment? You know, Lester, they always say a person should invest in property. It's one of the most safest investments to make because your property will always appreciate in value. Yeah, and I'm just looking at this graphic here and it started with the value of the house being small and then over time the value of the house increased. It appreciates, yes. It appreciates, yeah. 
That's the term we use. So, your property investment is obviously a long-term investment option. Can you just explain why is it a long-term investment option? If, if I buy a property today for a million rand and I want to sell it in a week's time, will I be able to make a profit? Not really. I would say you must remember most people have a mortgage bond on their homes and the mortgage bonds is normally a 30-year term period. So it means, but it could mean that, you, that the value of the property can appreciate depending where it is. If, for example, they want to build, the government want to build a road there, maybe they will give you a very lucrative offer. But you still have to take into account the mortgage bond you have, the interest on that as well. Amanda, but what often happens when people buy property, then they do renovations and they overcapitalize on that property. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think you should only overcapitalize on the property if you intend staying there. You know, people, some people have roots. Once they build, buy them a home, they plan to stay there for the next 30 years. But if you know that you want to buy and sell and make a profit that way, then it's, you know, you should just renovate to make the, the home beautiful and appreciate a little bit so that you, it's possible for a buyer to buy it. I could not have expected a better answer. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, your property investment, as we were saying, the first one, it's a long-term investment. It also can generate rent income for you. That's if you're leasing out any portion of the home. There is capital to be gained because, as we said earlier, the home will appreciate in value. It's very seldom that a house does not appreciate in value. Yeah, I know there are people who bought houses for, say, 100000 and within a 10-year period, the value of that house increased to 600,000 rand. So indeed, the capital gain there would be the 500,000 extra that they made. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, you must remember if you invest in your money to buy something like a car, the minute you, the car drives off the showroom, it depreciates. So that is why we always say property is a very good investment to make. Thank you. Right, Linus, the next one is an interesting one. It's what we call unit trust. Unit trust, very important. It's a long-term investment option. Um, if you intend uh, selling your shares very shortly or you need money urgently, don't go into unit trust because you only realize the value or appreciates over the long term. Right, so what is a unit trust? It's when a large group of people pull together their investments. So instead of one person investing, a group of people put all their money together. And then with that money, they buy units in a share portfolio. So this is distinct from when you buy shares. When you buy shares, you are the owner of the shares. But when you buy a unit trust, you are not the owner of the shares. Your shares are put together and that we call a share portfolio. And then they divide that share portfolio into different units. Just look at this example. We are part of a unit trust. They used our money to buy shares in Fund 1, Metropolitan, Fund 2, Standard Bank, Fund 3, JP Morgan, and Fund 4, PWC. So you can see our risk is being spread over different companies. And so with that, what they do is they create equal amounts of units and then you can then buy a unit. Now, you can either buy it with a lump sum, that is one big amount, or you can make regular monthly payments to pay for your unit. Important, you are not the owner of the shares. The shares are put in what we call a portfolio. The portfolio is divided up into units and you then buy those units. And that is what is called a unit trust. The next one is what we call offshore investments. Amanda, you want to speak to that? Again, the clue offshore, Amanda, what does that refer to? Offshore investments means when you invest in outside the country, then there's an offshore investment. It's an investment fund abroad and the reason why people use this option 
especially if investments in our country is not always as well or the investor, investor confidence is not as good, then people will tend also to invest in other countries where the markets are emerging, where it seems that um, things are more profitable on that side as well. If you look at the moment, we look at the BRICS countries, like your Brazil, Russia, China, South Africa, India, those are the countries to be investing in. Yeah. Yeah, those are the emerging markets, the established markets. What will that refer to? Our established markets are our markets that's been around for a while. It's, the, it's Germany, it's America, those type of countries. So you're telling me that individual investors, individuals in this country can invest overseas in their markets? Oh, yes, absolutely. Ask Mark Shuttleworth. <laughs> oh, is that how he made his money? <laughs> there we go. Right, Linus. Shares. Let's look at shares quickly. Shares, we say, is a medium to long-term investment option. Again, if you need the money immediately, don't invest in shares. Let it stay for a year or two or three, and you will see the profits you can make. When you are the owner of shares, you get income in the form of dividends, and we're going to unpack um, shares and dividends later on. There's also a capital gain involved when you buy shares, and that simply means that the value of your shares increases over time, and that allows you to make a profit when you sell your shares. I wonder if you could just look at the following example. Say, for example, you bought a hundred shares at three thousand. Now, very important when the right shares, the value of the share is always written in terms of cents. Very important. So, what you must do is you must convert the cents into rands if you want to do your calculations. And how do we do that? Very simple. We take the amount they give us and we divide it by a hundred. And so you know from your grade five maths, that note cancels with that note, that note cancels with that note, one goes into 30, 30 times. So you bought a hundred shares at 30 rand. That means you paid, for your shares, you paid 3,000 rand. Am I right? Yep, you've paid 3,000 rand. That was on the 1st of January 2013. On the 30th of June 2013, the value of that share was 50 rand. So that means if you sell that share on that day, you are going to receive an income of Remember you had 100 shares times 50. times 50 rand. And so you're going to get an income of 5,000 rand. Over the six month period, you paid 300 rand for the shares. And you got a 5,000 rand when you sold it. So you made a profit of 5,000 minus 3,000 equals to 2000 that is a profit you made or that you that is your return on the shares that you've bought and eventually sold and that's basically how people create wealth by buying shares and selling shares let's do while you're busy they give them the formula for that return on investment amanda we are going to come to that part a little bit later um, and then we can give them that formula because there's a calculation involved that I also want to do with them. Okay, I just thought you now did the calculation with them. <laughs> Linus, so I mentioned the fact that we bought the shares for 30 rand and we're selling it for 50 rand. Yeah. So when the prices of shares generally increase, and you can see the prices, price increase from 19 rand to about 20 rand 10 cents, when it generally increases, increases, we call that market a bull market. 
Just think of the horns of a bull going up. I'm not the best artist, but the horns of the bull pointing upwards increases. We call it a bear market. Now, you, buying shares is a risky business because not all shares prices increase over time. Some shares, their prices over time will decrease. And this is a typical example of Telcom. You can see in May it was around about 38 rand a share and now in April it's about 24 rand a share. So you can see the value of the share, share prices decreased over time. And when that happens, we say it is a bear market. A bear with a sore tooth. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, they are still being very generous to Telcom when they talk about the price being 38 Rand. Because I can recall the price of Telcom shares was about five, six years ago, about 185 Rand. And currently the price is about 18 to 20 Rand per share. And so that was a bad, bad bear market that Telcom experienced. We should use Telcom when we discuss strategies. We should <laughs> certainly do that. We must certainly do that. Righto. Amanda, what are we going to look at next? We're looking at the JSE, which is the acronym for Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Very important, learners. Very often they ask you what write the abbreviation JSE out in full. And here's two marks they're giving away. Johannesburg Security, they will even accept the word stock exchange as well. Okay, your Johannesburg Stock Exchange is the, the stock market, is the place where shares and bonds and debentures and unit trusts are bought and sold. And what is the main commodity traded on the JSE? That's your shares. The main commodity will be the shares. Learn is important, the functions. Now, if there's two questions that you must study, the answers of those questions, then it's the functions of the JSE and also the functions of your workplace forums. You can be assured of 10 mocks if you know those 10 functions, five of the JSE and five of your workplace forums. Now, let's just look quickly. Thanks, Wals. I hope you heard that clue. Now, I didn't set the paper, um, <laughs> but certainly make a note uh, at this, what's today? Today's the 26th? 26th, half past five. I predicted there's going to be a question in the paper, functions of the JSE or functions of your workplace forums. There's 10 marks in the bags, grade 12. Right, so how do you get these 10 facts, five of Johannesburg Security Exchange and five of the workplace forums, how do you get that into your head? Learners, I don't believe you must study like a parrot. I think it's important that you must find the key word, the key concept in a sentence. And if you can, if you can remember the key concept and you can make a sentence with that key concept, eventually what's going to happen, that knowledge will move from your sh short-term memory to your long-term memory. And once it's in your long-term memory, it stays there, it's easy to recall, you don't have to study again. So what am I saying here? Firstly, the first function is link, or the first concept is link. Now, you cannot write the word link in the examination. Oh no, you can't. You must write in full sentences, grade 12, otherwise you will be penalized. But what I'm saying, Amanda, is that our grade 12 learners must study Harder, smarter, <laughs> instead of harder. Okay. So, to me, it's quite easy to remember the word link. So, how do I put that in a sentence? Very easy. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange link the investor with the entrepreneur. And these are two facts. Your two marks Do for you? one fact. Okay. Using that word link. So, simple. Now, you're not going to remember it if you are just going to say, um, study it once. You've got to repeat it over and over. over again. And so you've got to cut out that word link, paste it wherever you regularly or frequently sit or sleep, and so that you can see it. And when you see it, you make that link. The 
invest the JSE link the investors with the entrepreneurs, the people that need the money, the companies that are shell selling the shares. Let's look at the second one. Is there a comment for you? Um, Martin Matthew from Homeville High. He says, can you please go a little bit slow? Thank you. Martin, we do sympathize with you. Um, we, we said that we are going to make these slides available for you. However, we've also got limited time and we need to cover quite a few topics today. So, Martin, we'll try our utmost, but please send me your email address uh, or send me an email and I will send you a copy of this presentation. But thank you for, for that, Martin. We really appreciate those uh, comments and also concerns. Right, learners. so the second concept you must remember about the JSE is barometer. The JSE is a barometer of the economic conditions in our country. It tells us whether the economy is healthy, whether the economy is strong, whether, or whether the economy is weak and whether the economy is going through periods of perhaps a recession or a depression. That we can pick up from the information, the statistics that the JSE gives us every day. So, two words, link, barometer, put it into a sentence and then you've got four words, four marks already. Ritual High, they says they are enjoying the session. Ritual High, we are really honored and glad to have you with us and we trust that we can um, assist you even further. Right, Linus, so what is the next concept? The next concept that you must remember is that the JSE encourages small investors to participate or to become owners of shares in big companies. So even if you've got only a hundred rand, you can still use that 100 rand to invest in a company. And that's what the JSE allows small investors to do. We said earlier that if you don't want to buy shares, you can even buy unit trust. And uh, you will then become owners of companies by buying even a small, or a small share or a little, a few shares in big, big companies. And so that's another function of the JSE. Number fourthly, the JSE enables financial institutions to do what? You know that financial institutions or our big banks, they get large sums of money. And that money is not always borrowed by customers. And so what do they do with the surplus money? The surplus money, they can invest in companies or they can buy shares. And the JSE allows them to do that. And I hope by now you are picking up the picture. We've got the key concept. We put it in a sentence. We practice it every time. And then it becomes part of our long-term memory. Amanda, we need to hurry up. Um, time is really catching us. But I just want to complete the following. The shares on the JSE is valued by experts. So the market value is more or less accurate. And so you can be safe to know what the value of those shares are because those shares are valued by experts. And then finally, the JSE publishes daily the prices of all the shares that are traded on the market. So there is transparency. Everybody knows what's the value of all the shares that's being traded. And so learners, that is one way that I will study the functions of the JSE. Right, Amanda, what are we going to do next? Okay, the next one is Strata. Now, again, they don't normally ask a lot of questions about Strata. However, you must know what the meaning is or you should be able to write it out in full. Now, I wonder if one of our learners could possibly tell us what the meaning of that abbreviation strata stands for. What does it represent? Um, where's Cressway? They said they're going to give us the correct <laughs> answers. Cressway, quickly, you've got 10 seconds quickly. What does strata mean? If you, must, if you are asking the examination to write the word strata out in full, what will be your answer? Let's see quickly. 
I'm betting on Rietveld. Are you betting on Rietveld? I'm betting on Rietveld that they will come up with the answer as well. I'm sure Chris is going to get that answer. Oh, please let's don't give disappoint another, us. Let's give them another 10 seconds. And don't forget about Homewell, eh? Okay. Homewell is also in the house and Pescodia, a regular customers, they are also in the house. Right, oh, you've got another five seconds. Strata, what does that mean? How will you write it out in full? Let's see, Amanda, I don't see any answers yet. I think they do not have airtime. Let's just give them the SMS number again. 31498. Linus, strata simply means share transactions totally. Ah, Chris, I told you, congratulations. Congratulations, Chris, they say share transactions totally electronic. Great stuff. Right, so what it means, it enables investors to trade on the JSE in an electronic manner. So there's no more need to write out or to deliver paper certificates. All transactions, the buying and the selling of the shares, it's all done electronically. Online. Online and the user system. Actually, the system was bought from Switzerland. It's the same system that they're using there. And so all transactions relating to the selling and the buying of shares, it's done electronically. We call it shares transactions totally electronic okay thank you for that sorry for the delayed reaction now <laughs> we understand chris where it's a long way from here to steenberg oh thank they had to consult with the teacher first. no she's <laughs> not there today <laughs> Linus, we are going to move just for shares you need to know that we've got two types ordinary shares and preference shares amanda quickly briefly difference between the two Okay, your ordinary shareholders is, they have a vote in the company, which means they have a say in the management of your company. Remember when you tabulate the difference between the two, you always tabulate the same thing across each other. So with preference shareholders, they will have no voting rights and no share, no say in the company. Then with your ordinary shareholders, mm. they receive a, your ordinary share, uh, your ordinary shareholders, they are last to receive dividends, where your preference shareholders are first to receive dividends. And upon liquidation of a company, your ordinary shareholders will be last to receive any money that's left over. Where your preference shareholders, as soon as your creditors are paid and the tax man, they will receive their money. Okay, great stuff, Amanda. Thank you for that. Linus, this is the important things that we would like to look at for the next few minutes. The calculations. And learners often battle with that. The three types of calculations that you should be able to do is firstly, calculations on the return on investments. And Amanda alluded to that earlier. Then also how to calculate simple interest. And then finally, how to calculate compound interest. Let's look at firstly the return on investment. Just look at the abbreviation. We use the words ROI, return on investments. And what it what is return of investment? Simply, it measures the percentage return on a particular investment. A percentage return on a particular investment. How much are you getting back expressed as a percentage? from the amount that you invested. And that's simply what it means. Right, though, in order to calculate your return on investments, there is a formula. And the formula is a simple one. The amount that you have gained, the extra amount that you've gained, divide by the amount that you've invested. And because we want a percentage, we're going to times it by 100 over 1. Again, the formula for return on investment is the amount gained divided by the amount invested times 100 over 1. Let's look at a simple example. Young Kaylee, she bought 1,000 shares at 3,000 cent per share. Again, here, here we get it again. It's 3,000 cent. We need to convert the cent to rand. We said earlier, in order to do that, 
you've got to divide this by a hundred and if you divide it by a hundred you get 30 rand so Kaylee paid 30 rand for the shares how much did she pay in total it will be 1000 times 30 they're asking calculate the return on investment if she received a dividend of 50 cent per share now remember earlier we said that the income you get from shares we call it dividends if she gets 50 cents per share what will be her return on investment how will we tackle a question like that right a very important always write down your formula write down the formula and once you've got the formula you can then substitute so this is the formula amount gained divided by amount invested the question is how much money did she gain remember she had a thousand shares they are paying her five rand a share so she would have gained a thousand rand thousand shares times five she would have gained five thousand rand what was the amount she invested remember she bought a thousand shares at 30 rand a share she invested 30 thousand rand and so all you need to do is you put the five thousand there and you put the amount invested at the bottom and then you end up with the following amount gained we said is five thousand amount invested we said is thirty thousand times a hundred over one we cancel it out and we cancel out the noughts and we say 3 goes into 50, 16.67%. Simple calculation. To calculate your return on investment, you take the amount gained, divide by the amount invested, times 100 over 1. You do your calculations, you cancel out the noughts on top with the noughts at the bottom. Yes, 3 noughts at the bottom. Four notes at the bottom, cancel out with four notes on top. You are left with 50 and 3. 3 goes into 50, 16.67%. And that's how we calculate return on investment. We're actually going to come back to another calculation, return on investment. Amanda, you want to tackle simple interest quickly? Yeah, I think for today we only have time for simple interest. Now we're going to make time for compound <laughs> interest also. Okay. Grade 12, your simple interest is calculated on the original principal amount only. The interest charged in case of simple interest remains fixed for all the years. So the two things you need to remember is that it's always on the original amount and it's always a fixed amount. So to simple interest, there's three components to calculate your simple interest. It's your principal, which is your original amount. Your interest rate, which is expressed as a percentage, and your time period of investment, which is always in years. So there's our formula on top. It's I to calculate the interest. It's your principal times your interest rate, which is the R, times T, which is the time. And they are just stipulated very nicely for you, which each one is. Here's our example. Donovan invests 100,000 Rand in People's Bank for 54 months. Now remember, Great Wiles, I said earlier, your time period is always in years. So later on, we would have to convert that 54 months divided by 12 to get our years. Maybe we should ask the learners to calculate what it will be yeah. while I'm still busy reading the rest of the answer. I think that's a good question. If the learners could quickly just SMS, what will the answer be if we should convert the 54 months into years? Yes. Because that's what we're going to use in our formula. I wonder who's going to send us that answer. While they're busy, Amanda, let's just continue quickly. Okay. As you said, Donovan invested 100,000 Rand for 54 months. The bank offers to pay him simple interest calculated at a rate of 11% per annum. 
and then it says calculate the amount of interest that Donovan will receive after 54 months. Amanda, Show all workings. Oh yeah, no, okay, very important. There are two things happening simultaneously. Um, very important. Firstly, learners show all workings. I know it's quite easy to put the formulas into the calculator and you've got the answer instantaneously. But you are going to lose marks big time. So please, we want to see step by step how you got to the answer. And Ritwell said 4.5 years. Are they correct? Indeed they are. Absolutely 100% correct. Thank you, Ritwell. The, there was another answer from a visitor. Four years and six months. Yes, four years and six months. But we write it as 4.5. Okay. Right, on. Amanda, there let's just look at the calculations quickly. Right, we said Donovan invests 100,000 at People's Bank for 54 months. The bank offers to pay him simple interest calculated at 11% per annum. Very important, Amanda. Our formula, which is the principal times your rate times the time. So now we're going to substitute. It's, uh, oh, wow, we're there. Ritwell's got the answer already. Well done. You're right, stuff. Ritwell is one step ahead of us. Indeed. Uh, they I, are. I think they are saying we are working too slow. Uh, Martin, I hope you've seen that or you heard that. Ritwell have, has given us the answer of 49,500. Thank you very much, Ritwell. But just for the sake of all the other learners, Amanda. Our principal amount, we substitute in the 100,000. Remember for the right year, we need to write this down digitally. I'm not digitally, sorry. As a decimal, decimal fraction. As a decimal fraction. So it's 11 over 100. So the easiest way is just to write note comma 11. Or, or you say 11 divided by 100 will be 0 0.11. 1 .11. Okay. Times? Our 4 comma 5, which was the 54 months divided by 12 months, which gave us... 4,5 and if you add that together the answer should be 49,500 Rand. I think not add Amanda if you multiply Sorry, if you multiply no, together then you'll find the 100,000 times 0 0.11 times 4.5 and then you'll get what I call my retail answer 49,500 Rand. I think Linus that's quite simple quite easy everybody should be able to get that calculation correct and often this is asked as the mcq question absolutely Linus, compound interest is one of the most powerful forces in the universe and it was not said by an economist it was said by the physicist einstein <laughs> to think that he thought of that why did he say that he said that because when we calculate compound interest it's calculated each period on the original principal amount and all interested interest accumulated over the past periods and i think when we look at an example it will become clearer so what really happens is that we are adding accumulated interest back to the principal amount and we then calculating our interest on the accumulated interest plus the in the principal amount and that gives us our compound interest now let's just look at an example quickly Firstly, before we look at an example, the formula. Now, if you write down the formula, you will get one mark for that. Very important, always write down your formulas. What does the formula say? Formula says that the compound interest, that is the principal amount, plus the interest. That S represents the principal amount, plus the interest. Now, that's important because sometimes they're going to ask you to calculate only the interest part. And then you need to subtract the principal amount from the S to get the interest that was earned. So the S represents the principal amount plus interest. And that is equal to P, our principal amount. Open brackets. Inside the brackets is 1 plus our interest rate to the power of N. And that is our number of periods. So it's quite a simple formula to remember and later on we're going to um, substitute into the formula to see what is the, an the answer. Right, uh, there's just again um, expanding on what I said about the S, the P, the I and the N. Very important, the I here represent the conversion interest rate per conversion 
period. Now that's very important. Your conversion periods refers to the number of times in a year that they are going to calculate interest. For example, sometimes it can only be once a year. Then we say it is compounded annually. So that's once a year. Sometimes it is half yearly. Half yearly. Then it's going to be compounded twice a year. Sometimes it can be quarterly. Then it will be calculated four times a year. And sometimes it can even be monthly. Then your interest rate will be calculated 12 times a year. Now, these are what we call your conversion periods. If it's annually, there's only one conversion period. And then the formula remains the same. I'm going to say it again. When it's annually, there's only one conversion period. And then the formula remains the same. However, if it's half yearly, there's two conversion periods every six months. Then what you must do is you must divide the I by two. So you're going to, at the bottom you're going to divide it by two and the N you're going to multiply by two. Very, very important step there. If it's half yearly compounded, there's two conversion periods. So the I you're going to divide by two and the N you're going to multiply by two. If there are four conversion periods, that means it's compounded quarterly. You're going to divide your I by 4 and multiply your N by 4. And then if there's 12 conversion periods, you divide your I by 12 and you multiply your N by 2. Let's just look at an example. Amanda, do you mind reading that example for us? Chabu invested 50,000 Rand for three years at an interest rate of 10% compounded annually. Calculate the amount of interest that Jabu will receive after three years. Right, so in this instance we read that it is compounded annually so there's only one conversion period. So that makes it very easy. Yeah, we'll stay with our original formula. So we stay with our original formula. Your principal amount is 50,000 Right, let's see quickly what is I going to be. Remember, I is your interest rate 10%. We said earlier, you must write it as a decimal fraction. How do you do that? You divide it by 100 and that gives you 0 0.10. Let's because there's only one conversion period, you, you can certainly divide it by 1, but you're still going to get the same answer. Yeah, I was just going to say while you're busy explaining, let's see if the answer is forthcoming. Uh, okay. We'll wait for an answer. Okay, there might be learners. You, you reckon there might be learners who've done this already? Oh, yes, this is revision. Okay, let's look at N. N is 3 for 3 years. Um, because there's only one conversion period, we can multiply by 1, but the answer will remain 3. Right, so let's do the substitution. Here's your formula. S is equal to P times 1 plus I to the power of N. We said that the principal, principal amount is 50,000. 1 remains 1. Your interest rate, we said, is 0.1 to the power of 3. What we do in the brackets, we add it together. 1 plus 0 0.1 gives you 1.1 to the power of 3. Then we need to calculate 1.1 to the power of 3 and for there you must use your calculator many of you have got that calculator let's just see quickly if we can get that answer right so we can say 1.1 to the power of 3 so that's quite simple 1.1 to the and you've got to go to the xy function xy function power of 3 and there's the answer one um let me just see quickly amanda let's just go let's just do this all one quickly we can actually do it within the 
while it's still in the brackets, we can do it like this. Let's see quickly. We put in 50,000. Open brackets. We open our brackets. I uh, trust you can see it. We put in 1.1. 1. 1. We close our brackets. We go to the y to the power of x function. And we say 3. And we say equal to. And we get the... Oh, Amanda, we've got an answer here already. 66550. That is the total amount of principal amount plus your interest. Now, is it Cressway? Oh, yes. That's Cressway again. Three answers eh? from the school. That's Cressway again. Well done, Cressway. I think they've got a simple calculation, simple way of calculating it. Thank you. That's well done, Cressway. But learner, that is one way of calculating it. Now, often learners, okay, the question was, how much interest did Jabu earn? Now remember, he invested 50,000. We calculated that the principal amount plus interest is 66,550. So the interest that Jabu earned was 16,550 rand. Lister, I just want to respond to Cresswell over there. They've used another formula. Now very often in the maths or the mathematic literacy class, they use a different formula for compound and simple interest. If that is the formula you know, Greg Twiles, then you stay with that. So long you write down the formula and you show us all your calculations. Yeah, the, the, the only problem I see with that formula is that it should be to the power of 3, eh? Yes. It should be to the power of 3. Now, learners, sometimes learners struggle to get this right. They cannot use that XY function. So, don't despair. There's another way of doing it. 1.1 to the power of 3 simply means 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 and you get to the same answer 1.331. And especially for those learners that don't have a scientific calculator. Yeah, so they can still calculate it. The only problem is if this is going to be 1.1 to the power of 20, then you've got to write this 20 times out. But even if you must do that, rather do that and get the marks than to leave it blank. Ritwell say, can we use A for amount? Ritwell, yes, A can also be used. Um, I think the Americans like to use A, so A would stand for America. Amanda. <laughs> but certain, or Amanda, <laughs> or the A team. But just, you may certainly use A instead of S. I think the key part is that you get the formula right, that you do the substitution right, and that you do your calculations right. Amanda? We had one example there, Annie invested 10,000 for five years at the interest rate of 7.5% compounded quarterly. Now, here there are four conversion periods. And I just want to show the learners quickly what will be the answer. There's four conversion periods. So what must we do with our I? Our I we must write it as a decimal fraction, which is 0 0.75. And we divide it by four. And that becomes our I. Our N, it is for five years. But because there are four conversion periods, we need to multiply. Times four. Times four. And that gives us 20. And so this is how we're going to write it out. A formula, 10,000 plus 0.01875 to the power of 20. Again, we showed you. We go to our calculator. You can put it in. 10,000, open the brackets, 1.01875, close the brackets, y to the power function of x function, there we put 20 and equals to 14499. What is the amount of interest? You subtract the principal amount. And that is the amount of interest that he would have earned. Amanda? Our time. That's time. Amanda, wow. How time flew. Time really went very quick. Learners, we wanted to do one or two other exercises with you. But these exercises are on the 
PowerPoint presentation. I think you can see one on the screen now. There's one on the screen. It's in a PowerPoint presentation. When you do get a copy of the presentation, please work through it. We've also given you the solutions. Thank you very much for your participation to all the schools who SMSed in and provided the correct answers. Thank you very much. And also to those who commented, we really, really want to thank you. Amanda, thank you, man. You were more than a co-pilot this afternoon. Thank you, Lester. And to our great 12s out there, work hard for your prelims. We're expecting good results for business studies in the Western Cape as well as in the Northern Cape. Amanda, thank you very much. Linus, I really want to thank you. Please have an enjoyable afternoon and goodbye. Until next week and Sunday, I think the 8th of September, we'll be back with some more investment. And this time we're going to talk about insurance. Thank you very much. Good afternoon.